With lights kept low on the deck of an aircraft carrier for security purposes, landing a fighter jet requires skill, nerve, and an intense training regime. For many people, landing on an aircraft carrier's 300 feet runway seems like an impossible task. To slow down the landing plane, a series of arresting wires catch the jet's wheels and help bring it to a stop. One thing is for sure that the emergency fighter jet landing on the aircraft carrier is not only dangerous, but even more so when things don't go according to the plan. Exactly 70 years ago, U.S. Navy Commander George Chamberlain Duncan escaped from one of the most dramatic and widely publicized carrier aviation accidents of all time. Watching the footage today, it's almost miraculous that the naval aviator, a two-time World War II ace, was pulled from the blazing hulk of his Grumman F-9F Panther jet fighter with only burns and that he would be flying again within six months. It seems Duncan probably did just enough to avoid slamming into the stern of the warship. Still, an instant later, the jet had impacted the edge of the deck, known as the round down, and was torn in two, breaking apart behind the cockpit and bursting into flames in the process. It's a miracle how he survived such a deadly crash. While carrier operations today are much safer in comparison, Duncan's accident continues to remind us that in this unique working environment, things can still go wrong in a fraction of a second. Let's now dive into the history of carrier aviation and emergency jet landing. A Brief History of Carrier Aviation Exactly 111 years ago, carrier aviation was born from an experiment that would eventually evolve into one of the most important aspects of modern warfare. Undoubtedly, landing on a flight deck is one of the most difficult things a pilot will ever do. The flight deck only has about 500 feet around 150 meters of runway space for landing planes, which isn't nearly enough for the heavy high-speed jets. In 1910, Eugene Burton flew a Curtis Pusher biplane off the deck of the USS Birmingham, marking the first time the Navy had launched a plane from a warship, which came only seven years after the Wright brothers' first flights. This moment can be considered the birth of carrier aviation. The following year, on January 18, 1911, Eugene B. Eli landed the USS Pennsylvania, completing the first successful landing on a stationary warship. Afterwards, in 1917, British Royal Naval Air Service pilot Edwin H. Dunning successfully landed an aircraft on a moving warship, the HMS Furious, for the first time. He died five days later on a follow-up attempt, demonstrating the challenge of landing on a ship at sea. This was followed by the first plane specifically designed to take off from an aircraft carrier and drop torpedoes was the Sopwith Kaku. The plane, which lacked the ability to land on a carrier, completed its first flight in June 1917. As this technology evolved, it would play a critical role in future battles. On October 30, 1963, a C-130 Hercules pulled off the seemingly impossible landing on the aircraft carrier USS Forrestal. There, in the North Atlantic, the C-130 became the heaviest aircraft to ever land on an aircraft carrier. A carrier version of the F-35, the most expensive aircraft in history, landed on an aircraft carrier for the first time in November 2014. Four years later, an American F-35B conducted its first combat operation from the deck of a U.S. Navy amphibious assault ship. So what's the science behind the intense landing on an aircraft carrier? Let's find out. Landing process of a fighter jet on an aircraft carrier. To land on the flight deck, each plane needs a tail hook, which is exactly what it sounds like, an extended hook attached to the plane's tail. The pilot's goal is to snag the tail hook on one of four arresting wires. These are sturdy cables composed of steel with high tensile strength. The arresting wires are stretched across the deck and are attached on both ends to hydraulic cylinders below deck. If the tail hook snags an arresting wire, it pulls the wire out and the hydraulic cylinder system absorbs the energy to bring the plane to a stop. The arresting wire system can stop a 54,000 pound aircraft traveling 150 miles per hour in only two seconds in a 315 foot landing area. Function of arresting wires. There are four parallel arresting wires placed at a distance of 50 feet or 15 meters apart to expand the target area for the pilot. Pilots are aiming for the third wire as it's the safest and most effective target. They never shoot for the first wire because it's dangerously close to the edge of the deck. If they come in too low on the first wire, they could easily crash into the stern of the ship. It's acceptable to snag the second or fourth wire 
but for a pilot to move up through the ranks, he or she has to be able to catch the third wire consistently. To pull off this incredible trick, the pilot needs to approach the deck at exactly the right angle. The carrier air traffic control center below deck decides the landing order of the waiting planes based on their various fuel levels. When it's time for a plane to land, the pilot breaks free of this landing pattern and heads towards the stern of the ship. Landing signals officers. Also important to note here is that the landing signals officers help guide the plane in through radio communication as well as a collection of lights on the deck. If the plane is off course, the LSOs can use radio commands or illuminate other lights to correct him or her or wave him off, send him around for another attempt. In addition to the LSOs, pilots look to the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, commonly referred to as the lens for landing guidance. The pilot will see different lights depending on the plane's angle of approach. If the plane is right on target, the pilot will see an amber light, dubbed the meatball, in line with a row of green lights. If the amber light appears above the green lights, the plane is coming in too high. If the amber light appears below the green lights, the plane is coming in too low. If the plane is coming in way too low, the pilot will see red lights. Pushing engines to full power. As soon as the plane hits the deck, the pilot will push the engines to full power, instead of slowing down to bring the plane to a stop. This may seem counterintuitive, but if the tail hook doesn't catch any of the arresting wires, the plane needs to be moving fast enough to take off again and come around for another pass. The landing runway is tilted at a 14 degree angle to the rest of the ship, so bolters like this can take off from the side of the ship instead of plowing into the planes on the other end of the deck. As soon as an aircraft lands, it's pulled out of the landing strip and chained down on the side of the flight deck. Inactive aircraft are always tightly secured to keep them from sliding around as the deck rocks back and forth. Unexpected events on the flight deck. The flight deck crew has to be prepared for a wide range of unexpected events, including raging aircraft fires. During takeoff or recovery operations, they have plenty of safety equipment at the ready. Among other things, the flight deck has a small fire truck and nozzles leading to the water tanks and aqueous film forming foam and advanced fire extinguishing material. There are also nozzles for jet fuel and a number of other useful liquids. Flight deck personnel also face the risk of a jet engine blowing them overboard. Safety nets around the side of the flight deck offer some protection, but for extra safety, personnel are also equipped with float coats, self-inflating jackets with flashing distress lights, activated by contact with water. Flight deck personnel also wear heavy-duty helmets called cranial, which protect their head and their hearing. So that shows very clearly why the process of fighter jet landing on an aircraft carrier is so intense and nerve-wracking. That brings us to the end of today's video. If you want to know more about defense and unique military stuff, make sure to watch other videos on our channel. Thanks for watching.